All right, line Y, well, it should be Y4 over here because we're on maintenance. Uh, learn task one, maintain DC motors. We're not going to go through this thing relatively in depth because most of what we are going to go and cover for DC motors is going to be the same thing as what we covered off on our DC gen sets before. And a lot of that had to do with how to track down faults inside of a winding. We can go and use, you know, a ohm meter. We can then go and hook up to a power supply so that we can actually recreate any faults. And then we can also go and use those uh, growlers themselves. Go back, refer to that video if you want to know a bit more about troubleshooting the windings, etc. And use of the actual growler that's going to be this funny looking beast over here inside of the system. Um, but I'm going to talk about something a little bit different right now, which is going to be a lot more to do with my mechanical end. And that's why we're just going to focus on this one. The mechanical end of a motor is going to be a lot different than what it is going to be of a gen set. Gen sets are going to be by default generally placed into areas that are going to be less hazardous, less dirty, a little bit easier to go and maintain, etc. And they're generally speaking going to be in a much cleaner type of environment. Motors are going to get placed out into industry and as a result of that a lot of cases we are going to go and have misalignments between our motors themselves between the shaft of the motor and the actual wearing surface that it's going to be on and we're also going to go and have a lot of side torsion off of our motors. If we take a look at a motor that has got a pulley attached to it that uh, pulley or chain drive <coughs> excuse me is going to go and results in a lot of force going down in this same direction over here. And so we're going to be wearing pretty hard up against that surface on our motors. Because of that, we want to, uh, you know, make sure that we maintain our bearings a little bit better off of here. It is also going to result in the shaft. If you can imagine the shaft pushing through here, it is going to go and push a little bit up against there. Because if you could look at this, you see that you've actually got a fulcrum. You've got a force pulling this way. It is going to be pulling up against that fulcrum over there. And then it's going to be pushing out up against the outside of the bearing on that side. You will get uneven bearing movement off of these things. And if this is allowed to go and get too sloppy off of here, you're going to go and start running the actual uh, armature of your motor into the sides of the stator, the stationary part of the motor there. We want to try and avoid that. So um, be, take more care when you have got side loadings off these things to go and maintain all of your bearings. A bearing failure on a side loaded motor is going to result in a much faster overall failure than what you are going to get if you have this thing directly coupled to a gearbox because that gearbox would go and give us self-centering. The other thing we're going to talk about is the commutator here. The commutator is going to go and develop a patina and all that a patina is is a patina is a fancy way of saying a specified amount of corrosion that's going to be lightly done and not so much that it's going to continue to go and corrode out heavily. The patina is made up of a couple of things. It's going to be reactions, chemical reactions. Uh, those chemical reactions are going to go and meet moisture. Moisture. I, I might not be spelling that right. I'm not spelling that right. That one's got to go. Moisture as well as oxygen that we need to go and create this reaction. What it is, is it's going to go and give us the, uh, between the arcing, so what we have on the brushes is always going to be a little bit of arcing. So the current that's traveling through there, the moisture, the oxygen, is going to go and give us a covering on these that is going to be kind of a brownish, reddish color. It should be glossy, meaning that it's going to be uniform. It should not be dull or matte because that means that we're building up carbon. And it is going to just be that brownish color. Should not see bright copper through. Bright copper uh, means that I've got too hard of brushes. Where we start to lose these is when we go and place these things into areas that are operated under vacuum. You must be very careful when you are specking out motors that a DC motor or anything that has got a commutator is not placed into vacuum. Because if I'm inside of a vacuum, we are going to go and lose moisture and we're going to go and lose oxygen. Where this actually came from, you know, this whole discovery is actually World War II. Uh, high altitude bombers, once they started to be able to push their bombers much higher, they found that anything that was electric motors was only lasting a few, if, uh, you know, any of the actual bombing runs. And it was just going to be because there was that lack of moisture and oxygen. It's where all of our brushless motors came from was that development where they're saying, hey, we have to have some way where we can send that power in without um, so any place that we are going to be operating where we have either got insufficient, extremely dry, if you have got something that is supposed to be desiccated, desiccated is just a 
fancy word of saying dried out. Uh, DC motors will not operate very well inside of there for long periods of time because you do not have the sufficient amount of moisture to go and build up the patina. Or if you have areas that are going to be operated underneath a vacuum, you're also going to, once again, lose that ability to build up that patina on there. So just be careful with those. Uh, the applications, like we said before, gensets are not going to be placed into areas that are going to be desiccated and vacuumed out. Uh, but motors commonly are going to get placed inside of process into areas that could have either one of those. Okay. For the rest, uh, there is going to go and be a couple of tables that you can go through on here. Um, the last thing that we're going to talk about is just motors being placed out in industry. Once again, we're going to go and place them in areas that are going to be dirty. And one of the biggest failures of motors is where the motors themselves build up a layer of dust, particularly fine dust. Now in a wood mill, you're going to go and be following a safety plan. You have to, all wood mills in the province require this. Uh, that is going to result in cleaning off. But in a lot of wood processing uh, facilities, places where people are building cabinetry and stuff like that, there is this fine half inch to inch layer of dust that is going to go and exist over top of everything. What this does is this insulates the motor. And as a result, the heat cannot go and leak from the motor, which is going to go and lead to all of that outgassing of our uh, windings. As soon as we get that outgassing of the windings, we are guaranteed that this thing is going to have insulation failures. So when it comes to industry, make sure that your clients understand the need to keep that motor clean. Uh, particularly when it's a large and expensive motor, once again, for every 10 degrees over 40, it's 50% less life that you are going to go and get out of that. So get them to keep them clean. You're going to have fewer overall problems that you're going to need to go and deal with. Okay, that's all that I wanted to talk with you guys about on the maintenance. Read the charts, do the self-test. That's it.